What is silver's magic number? I'll give you a hint. It's a price. And that price very well could determine the future of silver's performance in the market for years to come. We'll talk about it as we explore. We live in interesting times, troubling times, and concerning times, but there is a lot of excitement in the silver market as we've seen its price uh, rally 20% this year so far. And most feel that that rally is going to continue in some manner or form. And that leads us to the magic number, that price uh, that we're going to be talking about in a moment. But I think there's more to silver than just its price. And that is something that I have been wanting to impress upon the community this year especially because we often feel validated when we see silver's price rise uh, that we're doing the right thing by stacking this metal uh, but understanding that there's more to silver than just its price the value proposition that it contains i think really goes back to a more realistic number that's not magic at all it's science and that's the number 47 because as a commodity, as an element on the periodic table, there is no metal that is more diverse than silver. And I think we should celebrate that too. But as long as cele we celebrate that, we also celebrate the value proposition that silver holds that over the long course of time, it will preserve your wealth against this. Now, I can make that argument confidently now because the price of silver is rising. Of course, by the time you watch this video, the metals markets can all be down and silver can be smashed down a whole dollar from where it is at the time that I'm recording this video. That's how volatile things are in the marketplace. But really, it does not matter. Price matters only to a degree and it matters most when you go to sell the metal. But how do we determine price? Well, it's a measure against the, the dollar and the dollar strength. In reality, that's what it boils down to. And the dollar we know as a currency of of a solid value of a stable value um, it's waning a bit that's inflation uh, it's at a rate of 3.5 percent now but of course we know that when measured against other uh, commodities and other and other uh, elements out there we know that inflation is is much higher than that uh, but notwithstanding we know that the the dollar is losing value at a rate of 3.5 percent per year that's already on top of of the inflated uh, dollar that we saw the year before. I think since 2019, we're talking about 19, 20% or something to that effect. Uh, but uh, the dollar is, is how we measure, that is the unit of measure for the price of silver. And I think the more we step away from that and realize that when we have silver in our portfolio, no matter what the price is, we are holding wealth outside of the system. And I think that is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing to have something of value that has been recognized as, as a valuable asset for literally thousands of years. And that's not going away anytime soon. No matter what these markets say in these times, measured on these currencies, what happens to all currencies, they eventually die. Fiat currencies especially. And there's nothing backing up our currencies other than just the governments, that's hence the fiat, that's the decreed by governments. And so therefore, as the wheels of time keep spinning round and round, well, we are going to see silver's price literally catch up to the value of the metal contained therein. Of course, timing that is very difficult to do. Uh, you know, how do you put a price on value? And I think that's really personal for a lot of people. But holding these metals especially in in a form such as you see here in bullion form or in collector coins you're never going it's never going to go to zero and i think that is what should really give us this uh the sense of confidence that we're doing the right thing no matter the price but seeing silver rise uh, and rally 20 percent plus this year as of the recording of this video is exciting but there is a magic number a magic price that most people feel that once we hit it uh, then it's off to the races. Now, what does that mean? And uh, Well, I think that can be interpreted a number of different ways because no one really knows. It's just a number we've not seen in a while. I'm going to be reporting from a couple of tweets from TF Metals Report. That stands for Turd Ferguson, by the way. And I think this is quite telling about what's been happening recently in the markets. 
uh, as we saw just recently, hours ago, that the close on the 14th or the 15th of February uh, of April uh, was the highest close for a front month COMEX silver contract. Since the silver squeeze began on the 1st of February 2021. Now let that sink in. That was a targeted effort the silver squeeze was. This is a different thing. This is a different matter. This is a squeeze of a different kind and not orchestrated by trying to copy what they did with AMC or GameStop. This is something larger, much larger, much more, uh, I think, coordinated or not coordinated in a way so much just natural market forces making this effect. And something else we have to realize is that we are in a situation now where uh, this price closed north of its five-day moving average, uh, which essentially maintains, at least for the short term, a price uptrend. And I think that's a very safe bet and of analysis. Uh, so in other words, we could very well cross over that magic number. Uh, but the magic number must stick for quite a while before we start to see this thing happen. What is that magic number? Well, it's 30. It's $30. Uh, in another tweet, they say in 2020 and 2021, Spot Silver made several attempts to close above $29 an ounce, but it was reversed each time. It was reversed at above that level um, just this past Friday, actually, when it went to twenty nine ninety. So it, it's not going to be easy. So we got to watch closely as a couple of days closing at $29 plus could be a positive sign. Putting pressure on that magic number, that magic number being 30. It's, it's really fascinating to see um, how this is uh, making its way, how it's moving, and, and, um, and how long will that psycholo psychological number stay there. If we can hold and test and firm up at $30 as the new support level, which is, I think, quite a task, it's going to be difficult. You may remember not long ago that I said that $24.50, once we maintain that for long enough, then it's, then it's upwards to maybe $26. That actually did happen. I think it's going to be a much tougher case for $30 silver to maintain to be able to set that next support level. Once we do, then I think it's going to open it up, open silver's prices up to climb even more, at least based off of what we've seen in the past. In 2016, it got to $32 an ounce, which is quite something uh, to see. But of course, that was the last time, and it was down from there. So can we hang on to uh, to these to, to that to that thirty dollars uh, through the course of this bull run? Uh, well, I kind of hope so in some ways. Obviously, as buyers, we want to get the lowest price possible. But uh, when you think about it, look at through the course of the time, look at the charts, that cup and handle. You can even use some technical analysis. This is where it's going. That handle breaking out to the upside, and we see this kind of movement. And that wedge pattern that's been forming. And I think that wedge pattern is starting to really tighten up even more from a technical analysis side, which leaves credence to the possibility based off the trend line that we could see $30. And not just that, but in order for that to, to uh, really be something of significance, it's got to stick. And it very well could stick. And that would be something else to see. Uh, and I think we could get there. And we may even get there this year. Um, uh, that's quite a possibility. But I think this, especially with what we're hearing about now with India uh, being a, a record amount of silver imports and continued uh, usage of silver for photovoltaics, and also not just in EVs. By the way, there is still a lot of silver being used for those. Uh, even as the EV market kind of uh, backs off a bit, the hybrid market will indefinitely utilize more silver. I think you're going to see a push towards uh, the hybrids and silver will be utilized. In fact, plug-in hybrids will use almost as much silver as fully electric vehicles will. So I think that is something to consider here. Now, uh, that's why I pulled out this, this uh, one of my favorite coins, the one kilogram Libertad collector reverse proof version. But you're probably tired of looking at this, so let's put some other silver up there to have a little fun with. 
and to look at while we uh, talk a little bit more about uh, silver and its magic number there. That magic number being 30. And I think the, the, the longer we see silver's price uh, hang out above $29 and put pressure on 30, I think we are going to um, uh, get, we should get excited that we very well could see that $30 and that could stick with us too. But we really don't know. And remember, 2016, when it hit $32 an ounce, and then boom, it came back down from there. Now, history is may not always repeat itself, but oftentimes it rhymes. But that's a much different verse in 2016 than where we are at today. Look at the world we find ourselves in today that wasn't there in 2016, because I remember it well. Yes, there was some uncertainty there as well, too. We had the election uh, which was pretty hotly contested. But look what we've got now. I think it's been amplified even more. Uh, and we have to look at politics, both domestically and globally. Geopolitics and domestic politics are going to play a pretty big role, I think, in the markets in general, and specifically here in America for silver and gold. And I think that's going to, uh, I think that that's something we cannot ignore that's going to move the markets. And uh, and we also have to look at what's coming with the Fed. Uh, will the Fed uh, lower interest rates? Uh, I think it's quite a possibility that they may do it uh, at least once, maybe twice. However, uh, if they are going to do it, it, it may not happen until at least July. That's what I'm thinking. But maybe September, which is closer to the election. And it would be done for political purposes. We already know, as I mentioned in a prior video, that the that the Federal Reserve operates purely out of politics, and uh, and that is quite unfortunate and sad. But it's been proven, and uh, and they and we continue to hear other things coming out of the Fed that are quite troubling indeed, and so they are political, and they continue to uh, navigate and uh, manipulate the markets in that vein, and and that obviously is going to is going to put pressure um, on. Uh, on the overall idea that we find ourselves in that the dollar is this safe haven um, because in reality uh, they are in a rock between a rock and another rock as i like to say in other words it's really two rough spaces that they find themselves in that in order to thread that needle the last thing they want to do is uh, is hurt the administration and what is the administration all about is the administrative state they do not want to upset that apple cart. They're okay with upsetting your apple cart because inflation is this hidden tax and they are to blame for it. It is the Federal Reserve and it is also the Congress that is to blame for that with all the spending that's going on. Um, and so they're okay with upsetting your apple cart, but not the establishment. And that is the problem. So this is why silver has a good future because it will rise up out of this uh, and it's taking some time for sure it is but once we hit thirty dollars and we can keep that thirty dollar price level i think psychologically if anything as well as the technical analysis that i've talked about earlier i think both of those and the fundamentals uh, are good for silver and i think we'll start to see a new support level a new floor a higher bottom if you will that higher bottom will be the foundation from which we could find ourselves and maybe even getting to $35 an ounce and maybe even, maybe even $40 down the road. I know I'm getting a little crazy here, but that is a possibility uh, because once you firm up, I think that is the magic number that silver needs to be in order to get there. Again, with all of this analysis, I very well could be wrong. Uh, but it does not matter what my opinions are, what my feelings are. The fact that silver is what it is and has been for thousands of years is the most important thing. And what has it been for thousands of years? It has been a stable, well, not necessarily these, these days with the price fluctuating as much, but over the long course of time, it has been a stable store of wealth. And preserving your wealth is the most important thing. Finding that value proposition that silver provides for you, I think, is the most important thing. And yes, price matters, but it matters really the most when or if you have to sell. Um, and so keeping all that in mind, I think it's a good idea to hold on to your silver at the very least. And at the very most, 
Find some dips in the market and make a purchase whenever you can based off of your budget and your understanding of the markets. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. What do you think about that magic number of $30? I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch. Yep, you guessed it. I want to encourage you to please rate this video. Press that thumbs up button down below. Share it. Comment. And subscribe.